In this video, we're going to be talking about what I think is one of the most powerful features of Flutterflow, and that is custom widgets. So we are going to be covering everything that you need to know when it comes to custom widgets. And by the end of the video, you're going to realize why, first of all, custom widgets are super powerful and they help you build incredible, customizable and unique apps but also you will know exactly how to do all of the above. Not only will you know how to build simple custom widgets to customize little things about your app, but you will also know how to build more complicated custom widgets and also how to use the power of chat GPT to help you build even more powerful custom widgets. Now, before we get started, as always, all the videos that I publish on this channel you can view and or clone them from my Patreon page. So if that's something you might be interested in, check out our Patreon community at the link just below the video. Now, first, let's talk about what exactly are custom widgets. What is their purpose? Why do you need to know them? And how can they help you? Well, in order to understand that, the first thing that you need to realize that everything that you see in a Flutterflow app is a widget. So for instance, here we are on Flutterflow's homepage and you see this animation here where they're showing you how you can build your apps and really what kind of apps that you can build. And so this is a perfect example as any because Everything that you see in the app builder, as well as in the final version of the app, are widgets, right? So this page is a widget. This whole page is a widget. And all the little elements are widget, right? This is a text widget. This is a car. This is, you know, another text widget, another text widget. This is a chart widget. Uh, we have another text widget. We have another, like an arrow, which is a type of widget. So you have kind of these bigger widgets, right? So if you think about this whole page, this whole screen, the canvas, that is a widget. And then you have smaller widgets that are children of these bigger widgets, right? So you have this kind of, you know, parent to children relationship, right? That is the most fundamental thing that you need to understand when it comes to building Flutterflow apps, because everything after that is going to be a lot easier and a lot simpler to grasp once you understand how everything is built. OK, so everything, right, all the images, the video, as well as if you go into Flutterflow itself, right, if you click on it here, right, so we have our builder and let's say I want to add a new widget. Right. All of these are widgets. Right. But the big difference is that these are built in widgets. So these are essentially widgets that Flutterflow has built for you that you don't need to build yourself. So here I have a page and, you know, let's say, you know, the name of the page is page one. This is our first page. And I want to, you know, maybe have an image, right? Well, it's very, very easy. I can just add a child and just search for image, add an image. I can, you know, change the width. I can make it bigger. I can center it, you know, using the parent widget, the column, you know, is a parent widget. I can center it um, vertically. But this is a widget that has been provided to us by Flutterflow. And remember, uh, I talked about parent child relationship, right? So we have this image that we just created, but the parent is the column. And then the page is the columns parent, which is kind of like the grandparent, if you will, of this image. OK, so here, what you're essentially doing when you're building apps is you are essentially using built-in functionality that was that has been graciously um, provided to you by Flutterflow. And that is why we use Flutterflow. But there are some situations, in fact, there are many situations I can think of where, you know, the built-in functionality, the built-in widgets that Flutterflow provides you are not enough right maybe you want to customize same something that already exists or maybe you want to create something new altogether in these cases um you need to go out and create custom widgets okay so i'm gonna be giving you several examples from simple to more complicated and you're gonna see exactly how you can go out and build your own custom widgets depending on what kind of custom widgets uh, you're looking to create basically what kind of functionality you're after okay 
So let's get started with a very, very simple example. So I have this page one, and so I'm gonna delete this image. And this is my kind of scaffolding, right? I have the page ready, I have page one, I have a column. And before I can actually, you know, place this custom widget on my page, I need to go on create it. So I'm gonna go to custom code, which is on this left-hand panel here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a new widget. Now I already have some widgets created that I'm gonna be showing you a little bit later in the video. But first, I want to show you how to create one yourself. So we're gonna come here, we're gonna pick widget, and now we have a widget. I'm just gonna call it widget one. You can call it whatever you want. Now, an important thing that I have to say here at this stage is that when you're building custom widgets, you are kind of going into an area where the rubber meets the road, okay? So when we're talking about, you know, no code or low code and all of these tools, well, Depending on the tool, you know, you may never need to write code, but Flutterflow is more of a, it's a no code tool, but it also has low code functionality and also has, you know, coding functionality. And so when you're creating a custom widget, you're actually looking at the code that's being generated because when you're creating an app, right, this app here, uh, you may not, you may never see the code that's being generated, right? but there is code that's being generated underneath. But unless you're actually, you know, creating custom widgets and other, you know, functionality, you may never actually see the code that's being generated. And that's fine, right? That's kind of why we're here. Uh, we want to build apps without seeing the code. But in this example, we have no choice but to actually see the code because when we write custom widgets, we have to code something. And depending on the type of functionality that we want to implement, you know, we may need to code just a little bit or we may need to code a lot. And so, but it's important for you guys to follow the steps here uh, exactly, because if you don't, you're gonna have some issue. So after you, you give it a name, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna click here, right? And when you click here, you're essentially giving the screen and there's some code here and you can kind of ignore this code. What's important is that you have this boilerplate widget code and you can just copy to editor. Right now we have a scaffolding, a boilerplate of custom widgets and this is enough, right? This is enough. We have a custom widget right now. We didn't write any code. We didn't write, you know, a single line of code. All we did was uh, give it a name and then we clicked here and then we just said copy to editor and that's it. And now we have a custom widget. Okay, so what does this custom widget do? Well, let's go see. I'm going to say say. And you can kind of ignore this right now, right? You can kind of ignore this message. You can just pr press, uh, press yes. And now we've created a custom widget. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the UI, right? I'm going to go back to the part that you're typically interfacing with, interacting with. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press here. Instead of picking a built-in widget, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to pick the widget that we just created. So I already have a bunch of other widgets, but if you're just creating this widget here, you're just going to have this widget one. So I'm going to click widget one. And this right here, placeholder for widget one, please try compiling. Okay, that's fine. The next thing that you want to do is you want to give this widget uh, a width and a height. So I'm just going to do 300 and I'm going to do a 300 width and 300 pixel height. And now we have this. I can also center. How do I do that? Well, depending on how I have it set up right now, this is a child of column. And what this means is that I can center it vertically, right? Columns, uh, they align elements vertically. And this is already centered vertically because if I click on column and I come here, we have this main axis alignment, which is vertically uh, and it's already centered. I can also have it, you know, aligned um, to the top. I can align at bottom or I can center it. Now, if I want to center it horizontally, I have to wrap this inside of a row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click. I'm going to say wrap widget and I'm going to say row. And now we have this row here and now I can click on this row and I can center this. I can do it like this or like this. Doesn't really matter. We only have one widget. And now this widget is centered both horizontally and vertically. Okay. Now there are two problems right now. The first one is that I'm not seeing the widget. And that is because I haven't compiled it, right? Remember, we are doing a little bit of coding here, even though we haven't written any code just yet. There is code behind this custom widget. This is telling us, please try compiling and previewing again, it again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this red. You see, I have a project issue and I'm gonna click here and that's gonna compile it. See, it's already compiling it. And this is, and because this is a standard kind of code that we were given, you, we're not gonna have any error messages here. We haven't written any code. so we haven't had a chance to um, to have errors yet, okay? So we're gonna wait a few moments for it to compile right here. Let's compile it now. All right, so it finished compiling, and as you can see, it says no errors, okay? If there was an error, 
this would be red and there you know it would tell you what kind of error you have and where's the error but right now this custom widget that we pasted uh there's no error so we can go back to the ui this is the page and now this is our widget and it's not displaying that those instructions that it had before that we need to compile and except we're not seeing anything here we're not seeing it even if we were to run this app and i can do that right now so i can actually run this app for you guys just so that you can you can see for yourself what's happening right now so let's go ahead and create our test environment here all right so we finished compiling this is our app running exactly how our users would typically see and as you can see we're not seeing anything there's nothing on the screen it's as though we haven't really done anything when in fact we do have a custom widget here and the reason we're not seeing anything is because this custom widget is actually not doing anything so if we go back right we go back to our custom widget we go here what this widget is doing is you should be looking in this area right here you see this build this is a build method a build function whose job it is whose aim it is is to actually build the widget and to display it on the screen to return something that will be displayed eventually by the app and what it's doing is it's returning a container and the container is just another widget that contains something and so what you need to do is you need to make sure that this container actually has a child and that child actually displays something so let's create a child element that will display some text so we can begin by typing child and then we're gonna say text okay and now we can actually display something that you know will be text based that you're gonna see on the screen so now it says you know we have a container it has a child remember i talked about the child parent relationship where some widgets can have one child some widgets can have multiple children and some widgets cannot have children at all right in this case a container can have one child a row can have multiple children a column can have multiple children and then a text really doesn't have any children right it's just the text okay and so right now if we preview it, it we should see i'm a custom widget and what i'm gonna do is hit save right here okay we should also compile it again and you need to do this every time you change your code because Flutterflow needs to make sure that you haven't made any mistake. It needs to make sure, and, and you know, it's a good idea for it to tell you sooner than later. So it's, it's better for it to tell you now than later when you're running your app or, you know, when you've given your app to your users. Okay, so we're gonna wait for it to finish compiling. All right, so it finished compiling, there are no errors. And now we can go back to the main page and we should see some text. So as you can see, it says, I'm a custom widget. If we go back to our test uh, test environment here and we reload it, we should see the same thing. Okay, so now instead of having, you know, being kind of a blank screen, we are seeing I'm a custom widget, okay? And so what's happening now is that Flutterflow built this whole app for us, but it also built a custom widget that we built ourselves, okay? Obviously, you know, for this, for something simple like this, we can obviously use Flutterflow, right? Because you can come in here and, you know, you have this custom widget, but you can also add a text widget, right? So now you have a text widget, you know, you can uh, arrange it however you want, which would do exactly the same thing as what we've just done. And so in these kinds of situations, you obviously are not going to build a custom widget that just prints, does something simple. But I wanted to show you guys so that you guys understand how it starts, right? You still need to know the basics before you can advance uh, to the more complex things, okay? So I'm going to delete this. So that was our custom widget that does something very, very simple. And now let me show you some examples where we can do more complicated things. And you can go as far as you want. And I'm going to give you kind of the blueprint for you guys to go and build, you know, uh, custom widgets that are as complicated as uh, your app needs them to be. Okay. So here I have another page and here I have a button that does something very, very interesting. So if we go back to our app and let's say we reload it again, just for good measure. Okay. So this is our main page here with the simple widgets. Let's go to the second page and now we have a button, but it's more than just a button. If I click on it, we have some text displayed and what's going to happen is going to toggle it, right? So I can toggle it, click on it toggle it click on the toggle it so let's take a look how this was built if we go back here we go um to the second page we're displaying the second widget we're gonna go to our widgets come in here and we have a widget that's slightly more complicated okay and what exactly is this widget doing well when you want to see what a widget is doing you need to find this build method you're gonna start at the state right here you see the state you have two classes typically you're gonna have two classes you're gonna have your widget class and you're gonna have the stateful class the state class and the, the purpose of that class is to build the widget in response to a change of state and what is the state well something changed in your app something changed in that widget we're gonna be rebuilding the widget that would that's what makes uh flutter and flutter flow by extension 
uh, very much in demand is that they're reactive, right? We have state that changes, the user does something and that rebuilds the widget. And so if you take a look at this right here, we have the state, we have a build and we have children. And then what we are using is we're using an elevated button which is just a type of button. And then that button has a method called unpressed. And so when you click on that button, this function here, this, this code, you know, this code inside of this function here gets executed. And in this case, we just have very, very simple state, just keeping it very, very simple. And we have just one variable called the Boolean. And if you've used Flutterflow, you know, you can create app state, you can create page state, same thing. This is exactly the same thing. And in this case, we have a Boolean show text. By default is false, and that is why when you start it, you're not seeing any text because it's false. And so by default is false, but when you click on it, it reverses the value, it flips the value. So if it's false, it becomes true. If it's true, it becomes false. This is what this line does. And then we have this extra text, right? We have this extra text. And so we have a statement here, if show text, and this means if show text is true, right? So if it's true, display this. And if it's not true, this is not going to get X. Okay. And so as a result, we're seeing this, right? It starts off like this. And if we click on it, this becomes true. Remember, we executed this. It flips the value, toggles the value. And so it starts off at fo as false. Uh, when we click on it, it becomes true. And then this bottom text is displayed. This text just below the widget is displayed. So a very, very simple example, just, you know, but a little bit more complicated than the previous example. And you know, you can, you can take it as far as you want, right? You can make it as complicated as you want. Okay. So let me, let me keep going. Let me show you some more examples. Now in this next example, I am using the so-called third party packages. Okay. So Flutter and Flutterflow has built-in packages, especially Flutter. They have a lot of built-in widgets that you can use, built-in buttons, built-in text, but you know, people can also create their own components, right? And so if you head over to a site called pub.dev, you have access to a ton of other third-party packages that do a ton of amazing things, like all kinds of packages that do all kinds of different things that you can implement and integrate in into your own Flutterflow app, okay? So if you come over here, you can search for specific packages if you want. But if you scroll down, you can take a look at what, what kind of packages they have, right? So they have Flutter favorites, most popular packages. And, you know, some of these packages are just going to be just kind of under the hood things, meaning that you're not going to see them, right? So maybe it's something about connection or, you know, handling requests or something like that. You're not going to see them, right? But a lot of them are also going to be widgets that you see that you can interact with, right? So as an example... If you come over here, you have top Flutter packages, right? You have a rating bar, a simple yet fully customizable rating bar for Flutter, which also includes a rating bar indicator, right? So this is a widget. This is not a widget, right? This is a composable multi-platform API for HTTP requests. This is more for coding, right? This is not something that you should be concerned right now. So if you scroll down, you're going to see all these different packages, all of these different things. And one package that I wanted to kind of use was a package that displays a, a video, right? A custom widget that displays a video and also lets you play a video as well. And so if you search for video or like video player, you're going to see it. So let's say I type video player here. You're going to see, well, we have a video player here, right? And that's obviously a widget because it's 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 viewable, right? It's it's presentable. You, you're going to be interacting with it. It's not some library that, you know, is going to be doing something under, under, under the hood, right? This is going to be something you're going to be interacting with, right? And so I opened this one up and this is the page that we have, right? Now, once you've located the kind of package you want to be using as a custom widget, uh, you want to pay attention to kind of, you know, more information about it, right? Because, you know, this is a open platform, right? There are going to be, you know, custom widgets that do amazing things that are very, very popular, that are frequently, you know, maintained, updated, things like that, right? But there are also going to be other widgets that are really not used by people. They may have bugs or people haven't updated them or, you know, maybe other issues as well, right? It's just like with anything else. And so the next thing you want to take a look at is these things here, right? The amount of likes, 
uh, the number of pop points and the popularity, right? And this is like, you know, the more people are using it, right? The more people are using it, the, these specific widgets in their own apps, the better it is going to be for you, right? So for instance, this has a lot of likes. This is relatively, it's a high number, right? So anything more than like a thousand, two thousand, that's a lot on this platform. And it also has 140 pop points, but the most important thing is it has a hundred percent popularity, right? So what this means is that this is kind of the default uh, the standard, right? The standard, I would say, like, or one of the standard video players on pop.dev. And so what this means is that um, it's it's a highly maintained plugin. Uh, people are working on it. It's It's been updated for all the, the new Flutter versions, et cetera, et cetera. And, and you know, in, 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 in simple terms, when you use something like this that has a lot of these uh, high, high numbers and, you know, this pop, it's popular, high popularity ratings, you're going to be, you know, there's going to be less hassle uh, to, to implement it, right? And so the next thing you want to scroll down, kind of get an idea what the specific widget is doing. And this is a video player, right? Now, Flutterflow has their own built-in video player. But if they didn't, this is what you would be doing, right? You would, you know, be looking for a third-party video player, right? So you can kind of scroll down. You can get an idea what's happening. And now let's say you want to implement this specific plugin in your app. How would you do that? Well, let me show you exactly how you would do that. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go back to your app and you're going to say add. You're going to do custom widget. You're going to give it a name. So let's say we call it video player widget. Next, you're going to click on this button and it's actually telling you boilerplate code using the button on the right. It's actually telling you copy to editor. And now you have your empty canvas, so to speak. You have your beginning. You have your starting point. Okay. Now, what do you need to do next? Next, you're going to go to the widget that you pick and you may go to like a little example, right? So if you go to README, they have, they typically have examples on the bottom. And when you see this code, the quick and fast rule is that you want to copy everything below the state. So we're going to ignore all this because we already have that. But if you copy all of this here, all the way to the bottom, you copy this and you come in here. You go back to your app here, and then you select all of this inside uh, just below this line that has stayed, and you paste it. Now, once you've pasted this code, there's two more things that you need to do, okay? The first is that you need to get this dependency, right? Remember, this is a piece of code that somebody has built, and you don't have it, right? So you need to tell Flutterflow that we are using this code. It's one thing to kind of copy the code, but you also need to uh, point it so that it gets the, the actual library that it's using it, right? So what you want to do is you want to come in here and you can just hover over this and you can just click on it. That copies the dependency. You're going to go back to your app and you're going to say add dependency. You're going to paste it here. There's one more thing that you need to do. And that is if you scroll back to the example, you see it says here, um, import package Flutter material. Do not worry about this first line. Whenever you see import package and what typically is going to happen, you're, it's going to be the same package. So like video player forward slash video player dot dart or, you know, music player forward slash music player dot dart. It's kind of a quick and fast rule. You can copy this right here and just this line right here. Copy that control C go back and you want to paste and you want to paste it right here now once you've done that you're going to have a widget that looks something like this so i already did this and this is the widget that you're going to have and what's cool about it is that you can actually preview it right now so all you have to do is click here and you can preview this widget you can uh, make it with is a little bit bigger height a little bit bigger and you have the preview now this is not functioning you still need to compile it but at least you kind of see what the widget looks like in its kind of initial state. Nothing is going to work. It's not going to play anything. Nothing, nothing is clickable because we haven't compiled the code. We're just kind of viewing the initial state. And so in this case, what you want to do is you want to go back to your widget, right? We're going to go to this editing screen. We're going to hit save. Next, you're going to hit compile code. You're going to wait a little bit. When it's done, you're going to see no errors and everything should compile perfectly if you follow the direction. And now you can go back to your app here to the UI, this page, and include this widget. So I already have it included, but if I had to do it from the beginning, I need to pick a place. I'm going to pick a place where I want to insert it. So let's say here, I'm going to come here and I'm going to pick this is widget three. And this is the widget. So I can make it a little bit bigger, make it a little bit bigger. Okay. 
And so now if we refresh our app or create a new session, when a session expires, we should have a custom video player that we can use uh, in our apps. All right, so here's our app. Let's go ahead and take a look at that custom widget. And this is the custom widget that we've just created using the help of a third party library. So we can actually play it, right? So we can do that. You see, it's actually playing this video. And you might be wondering, uh, what video is it playing? Well, it's actually very, very simple. If you go back to our custom widget here and we go back to the code, it's actually loading up a sample video file. Okay, it's loading up the sample video file. Now, it, that's not going to be very much useful for us to play like a random video file, like to, to you know, to play a video file of a bee that's kind of um, buzzing around, right? Well, thankfully, we can also include our own custom arguments. We can pass them into a custom widget. So we can pass all kinds of, you know, interesting arguments that we might need for the custom widget to have. So how do we do that? Well, that is actually also very, very simple. And the way you do it is you go back to the custom widget that you, you wanna add custom arguments to, and you wanna click on here, add a parameter. So we're gonna say add a parameter, and we're gonna say, well, we wanna pass like a custom URL to play or something like that. And you wanna say string, and you're gonna say a custom URL. That's what we wanna call it. Now, we're not done here yet, okay? You want to click on this thing here and the boilerplate button here and you want to see how this is actually done. So you see right now we have this key width, height and width and height. But when we add this here, if you click here, you're also going to see custom URL that we've just added, added to the code. So what you need to do, guys, is because we already have the code, we can't just paste this boilerplate over our custom widget that's just gonna override it and that, that's not gonna do us any good. What we need to do is we need to take a look and see how it's done here, okay? So you see how it's after height and this is also after height. So now I can go back and I can just type it in myself. This custom and same thing here, final string custom URL. Now, after you've added those parameters, we're not done just yet. We need to link the parameter to the actual video that's being displayed. And you see, this is the video that's being displayed. This is that video of the bee buzzing around, but this is our parameter here. So what we need to do here is it says network. What we're gonna do, we're gonna say widget dot custom URL, okay? That's all you need to do. And now we can delete this thing here. And now instead of just displaying a random, um, you know, buzzing bee video, or whatever that was hard coded there, it's gonna display the URL that we specified uh, dynamically, right? And so what this means is that we can essentially send a unique value from our app to be displayed by the custom widget. And that's exactly what you need to do, right? There's no need to display like a random hard-coded, you know, uh, URL of a, you know, a video of a bee buzzing around. You want something that you're going to be uh, supplying as part of your app. If we go back to our UI, we go back here, we come back here, and let's say we want to add this widget here. So I already have it added, but let's say I was adding it uh, from scratch. I would just click a plus, click here, and select widget three in this case. Okay, and now we have this widget. I'm going to give it, uh, make it a little bit bigger, like a, a width of 300, height of 300. And now, in addition to these two properties here, right, that we're passing this height and width, we also have this custom URL that we can pass as well. And so if you have a video or something, uh, you can pass you know, a link to a video that will be playing something. So here we are on pexels.com. We can find a, a video that we may want to show uh, as part of our, our custom widget. And so we can just click here, copy video address, double check, and we have a video here, okay? So if I come in here and I take this URL of this nice video, we can paste it in here. We can run our app, reload our test environment, go back to the page that has the widget. And now if you reload the app, we can see that we're now viewing the video that we supplied and we can actually even play the video and as you can see the video is playing and this is by creating a custom argument we are we are passing a custom url of the video that we want to play to our custom widget pretty cool i would say now in this last example that i want to show you you can use amazing tools such as chat gpt to help you build your own unique custom widget. So let me show you exactly how you can do that. Well, the first thing is that you're essentially gonna go in here, you're gonna say, 
uh, widget. You're going to click here. You're going to give it a name, maybe chat GPT widget. As an example, you're going to click here, copy to editor, and you have this. The next thing you want to do is you want to go to chat GPT and you can type a prompt such as this one generate a flutter widget that rotates a box as an animation just generate the widget code without scaffold or app okay so you can use a prompt such as this one you can just replace this part here with whatever you are looking for and if you do that you're going to get a custom widget that looks something like this now this next step is very very important you want to come back to your app and what you want to do is you want to only copy a certain part of it okay so in this case, as you can see, we have this line with state. And so what you want to do is you want to copy everything below right here. You want to paste that into your app, come back to the app, and you want to paste it just below the state right here. Paste that there. Now, there's a couple of things that you need to do. If you come back to your uh, generated widget, you see this state it also has, in this example, it's giving us something else. So we're going to copy this, go back to the widget, and we're going to paste it in here. Now, when you finish doing everything, you're going to have a widget that looks something like this. And now you need to compile this widget, right? So we're going to say compile code. We're going to wait a few moments. Okay, so it finished compiling. We can go ahead and we can refresh our test environment, our app that is running. Okay, so we're going to go back. And now we're going to click through and find the the new widget and this is the result this is the widget that we have and this is exactly what we told chat gpt to do we said that rotates box as an animation and it decided to create a red box that essentially rotates at this specific speed now all of these things you can change now in this specific widget in addition to width and height we're also passing the size of the box and the color as well and i just created them as parameters uh, in the same way that I talked about in the previous couple of examples. So if we go back to the UI, we go to this widget, we have the size and we have the color. So I can change the color to, let's say, dark bluish, something like that. We see a little preview here, but if we go back to the app and we reload it, we should be seeing a blue rotating. Okay, we come in here and now we're seeing a blue rotating box. We can also change the size and kind of mess around with it. All of these things are absolutely customizable now before you go crazy and you start using chat gpt for all of your custom widgets there's a very very important thing that you need to understand and this is something that one of my students in my mastering flutterflow course training uh mentioned now what he was trying to do was he was trying to get chat gpt to generate a custom widget for him uh the problem was was that he wasn't building like a regular custom widget like I was doing here. He was building a custom widget that was taking advantage of the data that he was working with inside of the app. So in your app, you can be, you know, using Firestore DB data, you can be using App State data. And the problem arises when you're trying to kind of mix and match different things and get them working together. So as an example, if you're doing, you know, if you're, you know, building your app in Flutterflow and you have your data in Flutterflow, uh, you have to be very, very careful of how you actually pass that data and how you make that data available inside, you know, your custom widget or your custom function. Because Flutterflow has their own way of uh, managing the data that you're accessing inside of your app. So if you're using Firestore, they have their own way of, you know, accessing that data. And so if you're going to be using chat GPT to help you generate a custom widget, and you're also going to be telling it that you're using, you know, Firebase Firestore, chances are it's going to generate a widget that's simply not going to work because the way it generates, you know, data-based uh, custom widgets with Firestore, et cetera, et cetera, is different from the way Flutterflow does it. So if you, when you're dealing with things like data, you're dealing with, with these ty types of things, uh, you need to be very, very careful because chances are ChatGPT is not going to know you're using Flutterflow, and so it's going to make some mistakes of doing it. But for simple custom widgets that are doing some animation, some buttons, some text, things like that, you can easily use a tool such as ChatGPT to help you generate the widgets and then use them inside of your Flutterflow app. Now, if you watch this video and you're still not 100% sure on some of the things that I talked about, some of the things are not exactly clear, you're, you know, you have maybe a couple of doubts here and there when I was building, you know, maybe a simple custom widget or maybe a more complex custom widget. Well, the best thing for you guys to do right now, apart from rewinding this video and double checking things that I talked about, 
would be to view and or clone this exact app like I have it right now. Because when you are viewing it, you can see exactly what I built here. When you clone it, you can leverage the functionality right inside of your ass. Because you can typically take this app, you can clone it, you can remove the things that you don't need, and you can easily view and or clone the specific app by joining our amazing patreon community because when you join our incredible patreon community not only will you get access to all the flutterflow apps that are built on this channel but you'll get access to extra content such as q a's live streams behind the scenes content as well as my patreon exclusive masterclass series where i do a deep dive on a specific topic that the community is perhaps having trouble with. And so the community votes on a specific topic and then I create an extensive video where I hopefully get you to a new level of understanding of that specific topic. A lot of people have said that a lot of these videos really help them to kind of understand this at a deeper level and so if you're serious about building no code apps you really want to build that one app that you've been thinking about for a while or you want to build a ton of apps in different niches then joining our amazing patreon community is going to be the right move for you and you can join our amazing patreon community by clicking on the link in the description below this video now if you guys enjoyed this video and you're looking for more content that will help you build amazing apps with Flutterflow, then you should definitely check out my amazing training called Mastering Flutterflow. In that training, I broke in the process of building apps on Flutterflow into easily digestible modules where you have access to our community and you can ask any question that you have. Plus, you can also join our private Discord community where community as well as myself will help you with any issues that you have so that you end up building the app of your dreams and you can get more information about my training in the description just below the video